Hi, Riley with Lano Equipment in Shakopee. And today we're gonna to discuss the Kubota R640. We're gonna go over some brief overviews of it, operationals as well, and then we'll dive into more as what we can see and what this is capable and usable for you. The very first thing we'll start from the front and work our way back. As you can see on all of the Kubota R640s that we'll bring in, they are gonna have the standard skid steer quick catch coupler. Um, once we get to the inside of the machine, we'll also discuss how to operate that as how to drive and function that. Um, pretty simple standard setup on this as well. You can see again, any skid steer quick catch as far as buckets, pallet forks, pickup brooms, sweepers, any of that, We'll go on this that any Kubota machine or any other brand of machine that you have going forward with it. Um, as well as you can see on the very front of here, um, they're certainly capped at the moment, but it does have the ability for your angle plows or anything that does have to require auxiliary function on that. This is a 74 inch high capacity bucket that uh, a lot of the standard machines that we order come with them. Um, kind of working our way up towards the very front here. This is going to be their new Z-Bar design. As you can see, it makes a Z going forward for better lift capacity and also breakout force, which we'll discuss a little bit later on. The new featured tire on this one is a Goodyear 450 70R18. It's an all-purpose tire, so good for the snow, good for the mud, good for dirt, track, all of that that you have work. Uh, another common feature that comes with it is the fender flares, as well as the um, halogen lights on both front and then the LED lights towards the top. This is an articulating loader, so unlike other loaders, it's gonna articulate in the center. Um, there is no rear differential steering on that, so um, it's not gonna be compared to like your John Deere 244Ls. This is more like a 304 Cat 906, 907. A nice cool feature that Kubota does offer, when you do fill this thing up, there is this button above the top here signaling inside the cab that when you are full, it'll be a constant steady beat. And the nice thing with these Kubota wheel loaders as well too, is this door and also the operator station on the other side open up for good visibility. So you can talk to anyone on the right side of the machine. Big cast counterweight here, powder coated in the um, rhino lining as well to it. So it helps kind of with the rust prevention. Going towards the rear of the machine, this is gonna be a Kubota R640, so this is gonna be a 64 horsepower machine. So there is no depth with this, but it will have a DPF. Curb weight on this machine is gonna be about 12,000 pounds. Overall, from the front to the rear, 18 feet long. The straight tipping load on this thing is gonna be right around 7,800 pounds. And when you have the machine turned to the side, it's got a lift capacity of about 6,900 pounds. So a really impressive machine for what Kubota's offered for this 640 here. The Kubota R640 has a maximum height to hinge point of 10 foot 3 inches. As I mentioned before with the auxiliary couplers on the front here, it is going to push out at 17.8 gallons per minute. And with the new Goodyear tires, you've got a ground clearance of about 13 inches. On the very front right hand side of the machine, they have the daily grease points. Um, they're obviously going to want to recommend you either do that every morning or evening, and they really want you recommending every 10 hours. So like I said, once in the morning or once in the evening. Working our way to the other side of the machine here, you'll find the serial number as far as other what the tire capacity is, as well as an operator station and a platform to get into the machine. So like I mentioned before, here's going to be a nice daily grease point checkpoints, as well as the greasing and everything that's required for it along with the hours as well. Like I mentioned before, you've got the nice step stool grip so you can get in there, two points of contact at every point. Hopping inside the operator station itself, you've got your brake on the left side, accelerator on the right. Typically, a lot of the wheel loaders will have an inching or a creaking pedal. Um, this is a brand new machine that just came off the truck, so we have to get to install that. Um, once we start the machine with the ignition on the far side here, turning it to the start position, once it's running, there is this lever on the far side here, bringing it forward, tilts the steering wheel. A couple of things, obviously you've got the horn on the side, and you've got your turn signals left and right. Um, and then obviously engaging this is the windshield for the forward, and then slapping it forward and slapping it rear brings the high beams and low beams on. This button on the far side here that I'm gonna discuss, we'll talk about that in a few minutes here. That is gonna be your skid steer quick catch coupler. Um, you've got your points over here that's going to show up onto your dash. 
your beaking flashing, four-way flashers, and then obviously your parking brake here as well. So the first thing you wanna do, obviously on any piece of machinery, is put the seatbelt on. Once you have that, put your foot on the brake, pushing the button forward. Right now it is in the neutral position. So going to the far side here, hitting the black lever forward, puts the arrow going forward. So raising in a bucket, obviously just like any skid loader, up, down, curl, and dump. So like I mentioned before, the black arrow, or excuse me, the black rocker switch going forward, brings your machine forward. Hitting the backwards switch, brings it in reverse. Now most people ask, what are these two buttons up here? This is gonna be your rabbit, and that's your turtle. So by tapping that button there, you can see it goes turtle. And again, on the far right-hand side here, brings it into two speed. This button here as well. So say you're in the forward position going forward. This button here is gonna automatically bring that into neutral no matter what. So going back to the gray lever here. So once you have the switch going forward, you can hear a constant beep going forward. You're gonna then go to the gray switch, rolling it back. You will see the skid steer quick catch lever come unlocked, raising and lowering it from the ground, and then backing out of it. You'll see you'll have no bucket. So that continuously is on until, again, you hit that lock position. So again, neutral going forward, bringing it down into the machine itself. curling, rocking it back, picking it up, and then pushing forward on it, you will see the switches go down. Once it is in the lock position, obviously any good operator will want to give it a good shake to make sure the bucket's on there, and it is. And then again, to stop the beeping, pressing this button down here, has it in the lock position. Obviously, we've already gone over the ignition. This is gonna be your auxiliary coupler engaging it. Um, obviously, you've got your ride control here, continuous hydraulics for your gentlemen that decide to use snow blowers or pickup rooms or anything like that. This is going to be your hydraulic lock. So by tapping this button at your set position, if you're roading this for a distance and you don't want to bump this joystick, tapping that forward will lock this joystick in place. So you can see me shaking and it's not going anywhere. Obviously, you've got your daytime running lights. You've got your fog lights, and then obviously your rear lights, beacon switch, and then your windshield wiper fluid and wiper. This is your DPF regen button here, so you can inhibit it, or you can go into a manual regen position. On the other far left side here, you've got a cup holder, an arm bar. It's a very spacious and comfortable cab. You've got your radio that can go here got your speakers up on the far high side corner. HVAC controls here, obviously pretty self-explanatory. Pressing that button and tapping that with the AC on puts the cold air through. So like I mentioned before, this is gonna be the Kubota R640. We kind of touched over the hydraulic skid steer quick tatch, 17.8 gallons per minute on the hydraulic oil, the 13 inch ground clearance, the LED lights on the top of the cab, the halogen lights, the new and improved tires, the inside of the cab. This is Riley with Lano Equipment Shakopee. Please like and subscribe our videos.